Well, before I get into my prepared remarks, I want to say thank you to all of you who came to Lakeland at or around 8 o'clock this morning to enjoy a, a donut, coffee, um, all of which were donated by Meyer. They're a real partner and friend of ours. Um, they do a lot for us, things like donating donuts for today, things like donating cabinets for our CARES cupboard. Um, and so it's not so little things, and it's um, also the little things that they do that um, really have um, ingratiated them with us and, and the community. So um, I just want to give a, a quick shout out to Meyer for um, providing us with the donuts so that we didn't have to spend any foundation dollars on them this morning. So that was wonderful. The less we spend on donuts, the more we can spend to help students that you're about to hear from today. Um, and so, um, again, thank you for coming. I, I've seen college trustees here in attendance. I've seen foundation board members. I've seen staff members. I've seen community members. Um, all of you have a common thread. Um, you care about our students. And um, I can't tell you how grateful I am to have the ability to represent the foundation and see firsthand the results of your generosity. And so, again, uh, today is about thanking you, our donors, and, and hopefully letting you take a peek inside some of the programs and some of the lives um, that, that you support. So I'm Greg Sanders. I'm the executive director of the Lakeland Foundation, and, and welcome to our new spin-off event, Donuts with Donors. It's kind of a Donor Scholar Breakfast 2.0 with a reimagined and more casual flair. We wanted to bring together some of our donors, students, and Lakeland employees. Uh, many of our employees work tirelessly truly tirelessly behind the scenes and in front of our classrooms to help our students succeed. I hope you can take some time to get to know one another. Um, and this morning, you're going to hear from three Lakeland students with extraordinary stories to share. The students will be introduced by someone from the department that recommended them as today's speakers. And you'll learn a little bit about each of those departments. First, we'll hear from Mary Goss Hill, program coordinator of the Lakeland Women's Center. Mary will introduce Rhonda Hudson. Next will be Mike Bircher, Athletic Facilities Technician of our Athletic Department. And Mike will introduce Dominic Grobler. And last is Jennifer Collis, Associate Provost for Strategic Education Programs and Retention Initiatives, who, who oversees Lakeland's Honors Program. And Jennifer will introduce or reintroduce Janice Robinson. So, Mary? Let's get to the good stuff. <laughs> good morning, good morning. Thank you for this opportunity. Uh, I'm Mary Goss Hill, and I work in the Women's Center. I have been here for 14 years. Our fearless leader is not here with us today, but our other partner in crime, Diane Mull, she's here with us. So thank you, Diane, for coming. Uh, I just want to talk about the Women's Center for just a minute and before I introduce Rhonda. And many of you may or may not know the purpose of a Women's Center, or you may not know how fortunate we are to have a Women's Center on our campus. The Women's Centers are the first centers to go at many colleges, and we're still standing. We love what we do. It's really a great job to have. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of event planning, but our students are our priority. So we have so many different diverse students. The cultures are different. And I just can't say enough about my job. But since I only have, what, how many more minutes? I, I, won't, I will brag about the Women's Center to you individually if you ask me, OK? <laughs> So on to our uh, special guest today and our student, Rhonda Hudson. I have known Rhonda now for about eight, nine years. And um, Rhonda was actually, when she came to the Women's Center, we just had to have her for a student worker. Her personality, her gift, her empathy, as Moore says all the time, that's, you know, you left before empathy of the year came up. But anyway, you have it anyway. Um, but Rhonda is an awesome lady. And the one thing I want to say about Rhonda is 
Rhonda is a woman that knows her limitations. She won't let you take her over the top with classes, but Rhonda also knows expectations and she has very high expectations. So without any further ado, I bring to the stage Rhonda Hudson. Thank you, Mary. Thank you, Women's Center, and thank you all. And it is indeed my pleasure to be off work these few hours to, to be here at the Women's Center in real time and not hybrid. Again, I am Rhonda Hudson. And about 10 years ago, in 2012, I began my lifelong connection with Lakeland Community College and the Women's Center. At 51 years old, I decided I needed to upgrade my skills and after being laid off from Altel Publishing in 2009. Then again, six months later from that next job I found. By 2010, <clears throat> and at a crossroads, I was forced to take a look at my life. My life. Recently divorced, recently empty nested, I was lonely, depressed, and tired. But after my second layoff, I was strangely relieved and happy to take my unemployment. And as well as that TANF, uh, it was a TANF employment and training grant that was offered to us from Altel Publishing uh, that would pay for those who wanted to go back to school. And although I graduated from high school in 2010, I enrolled in a GED class through Parma City Schools at Ohio Means Jobs to get a handle on my weak math skills so that I could pass the college entry exam. As the only student in class that had their diploma, I attended class every day for nine months before passing the exam. I was once referred to the older woman that sits in the back that asks all the questions. <laughs> During this time, while laid off and home, I started journaling my thoughts, my emotions, and all those lucid dreams I was having. <clears throat> I looked for ways to, to ease the emotional pain I was in. As a young girl, I always liked to write. So I picked back up my pen and I began to write monthly articles for the, the monthly thought-provoking and inspirational articles for the Collinwood Observer and the Euclid Observer. My first public, art, my first public article was called Laid Off or Liberated. And this is when I first recognized how, how much fear had its grip on me. I froze when it came time for me to hit submit. That would have my words, my emotions, my thoughts out in the universe. I did not feel worthy. I began to cry and, and almost convince myself I could not do it. I was not able to press submit. It was my mentor who told me to just do it. I did it crying with her on the phone. Submit. And I cringed. <laughs> My first article published, and someone responded requiring a reply back from me. <sighs> the confidence I gained in having such a positive response was encouraging. And at the request of my GED teacher in my English class, I submitted another of my articles called Everybody is a Star that ended up winning a place in the Beginnings 15 magazine and an invitation to a luncheon at the State Rotunda to be honored among other winners whose articles were published. And as a young girl, I also like to perform. I played flute from the fifth to the seventh grade, playing with the school band. 
I was also a part of dance groups that performed at my neighborhood community centers. The end of my marriage, my children growing up and away, the loss of my job, and eventually letting my house go, and returning to school certainly brought my life full circle. It was my mom who gave me a flyer for the, uh, for the audition for the stage play, The Wiz, the African-American version of one of my favorite movies, The Wizard of Oz. And I went dancing. We rehearsed for 10 months. At, fit, at 48 years old, I was the oldest member of the cast, dancing our way to Emerald City for four shows and a second production in 2013 while I was a student here at Lakeland Community College. I discovered I could not do both, <laughs> perform on stage and successfully, successfully pass my classes. Studying for class took priority over rehearsals and performing. The experience was also a healing one that allowed me to dance and sing with words to my life as it was then, to become aware of its deepest meaning while in it was amazing and fun. As a full-time non-traditional student and during my second semester at Lakeland Community College, I would pass by the Women's Center daily on my way to my dreaded math class. <laughs> it was under anxiety and duress that I became acquainted with the Women's Center. One day after math class, I stumbled down the steps and fell into the door of the Women's Center in tears and afraid I would not pass this math and would have to leave school. Gloria, Mary, and Vicki Williams comfort and, and reassured me. To wipe my tears, they gave me what they told me were tissues for my issues. <laughs> I came to visit the Women's Center often and would soon begin to work study there. It was through the Women's Center I received a scholarship from a continuing education project with the Sisterhood of PEO called Helping Women Reach the Stars. PTO member and Sisterhood member Donna Capazzo and I still continue to correspond from time to time. As I was gaining more confidence and support, I was able to help encourage other women and non-traditional women that came into the Women's Center. I was able to identify with their pains and anxieties. Through my connection with the Women's Center, I participated with the beginning stages, offering ideas and upgrading the Women's Center's website. I assisted them with preparations for their annual Women's of Achievement Awards and helped with event tables and more. <laughs> the three years that I was a full-time student did not come without sacrifices. The hardest one, <laughs> I'm, I can't believe I'm choking up, <laughs> was not spending time with my grandkids. That was rough. They were little ones at that time, and they spent days and nights with me. I enjoyed taking them to their daycares and picking them up, and they were instrumental in filling my empty nest. So I used that pain to stay focused on my success as something that they would inspire, something that would inspire them and my children. After making the Dean's List three times, or if you count the summer semesters, <laughs> by 2015 it became necessary for me to go back to work. I reluctantly left Lakeland in October of that year was 67 credit hours. I had changed my degree from graphic design to marketing. And my, I received my marketing certificate in 2016. And as I stand here today, <clears throat> I am back 
again as a non-traditional student to finish what I started. With the help of the Dollars for D Dreams grant, I am working towards my degree in arts. At this time in my life, my thoughts are of self-sufficiency and an active retirement. And I trust my efforts will not be in vain. Recently, I was awarded $500 from the micro grant by the Small Business Development Center that includes resources and financial cash management, financial counselors, software, and more connections equals resources. <laughs> I plan to use these funds to purchase equipment and tools I need that will assist me in the performing arts. Since 2015, I have performed in over 25 productions, and not to mention the number of shows performed in those productions. I have written, directed, and produced a musical playlet, wrote a monologue series, and have been authoring my story that I hope to perform as a one-woman act. Like all other performing artists, COVID has changed and challenged the way we reach our audience and how we perform. My plan is to continue inspiring audiences through visual technologies by providing another outlet from that one that was shut down and social distance. Over time, the audience and the performer, no, hold on. No, over time, I hope the audience and the performer will meet again in person on a regular basis. <laughs> COVID is a challenging time for us all forcing all of us to think in new and creative ways. It signaled us the need for self-sufficiency. Thank you, donors, for your kindness and financial assistance. With all that you do as donors and all the resources and support you provide, we'll ensure non-traditional students and students like me, financial success. Thank you. Rhonda, thank you so much for sharing so much and for living such a, an amazing life. And providing us with that st your story. Thank you so much. And thank you, Mary, for all that you and the Women's Center do for all the students that you serve. I'll never forget the uh, last donor scholar breakfast, one of the students who participates or, or receives services from you mentioned that the Women's Center is like the mother she never had and how you guys never have let her down and you've always lifted her up when she needed you most. So thank you for all you do. Thanks. So grateful. So, moving, moving to our next speaker, Mike Bircher. Please, come on up. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Michael Bircher, and I've been working in the athletic department as a supervisor for the Fields and Fitness Center for just over 12 years now. Um, speaking on behalf of the athletic department, um, I'd like to thank each and every one of you for your don donations through the years. I've come across many student athletes who uh, have had a variety of needs and challenges away from the fields and off the courts. We do our best as an athletic department to assist our student athletes, but they wouldn't experience the same success without additional support from our donors. Whether receiving academic scholarships, emergency funding, or weekly visits to Lakeland Cares Cupboard, our financial support many of you provide makes the difference, one I have witnessed firsthand numerous times. Uh, starting off with the fitness center, um, we just, I'm not sure if anyone's very familiar with that area or not, but uh, we have a wide variety of uh, areas available for all our students. Um, there's basketball courts, racquetball courts, uh, dance room, karate room, uh, multi-purpose gym with batting cages. Um, we have free weights, Nautilus area, and an uh, indoor track. Um, also, outdoors, um, we have uh, home fields for our soccer teams, um, baseball and softball teams. And as well for the general public, we have tennis courts, uh, batting cages, and a full court basketball court. And this summer, we'll be putting pickleball lines down. Um, it's becoming huge in the area again. Um, 
Currently, uh, talking about the athletic department, we have seven varsity sports. Um, in the fall, we will bring in, uh, bringing on our eighth varsity sport, which is eSports. Um, we right now have uh, over 130 athletes from four different states and 12 different countries. Um, having so many student athletes being away from home, we found it necessary to find a way to live stream all our games and have recently worked with Huddle to make this possible for all our indoor sports. We're in the process right now of beta testing um, the outdoor cameras, so people like Dominic will be able to have their games live streamed for soccer, baseball, and softball. Um, when our student athletes commit to Lakeland, they understand that the word student comes first. Each team has weekly study tables, grade reports, um, show their progress through the years. Many of our student athletes have found great success in the classroom, with over 30 of them receiving 3.3 GPAs or higher. This leads me to our next student athlete uh, representative, Dominic Grobler. I have had the pleasure of knowing Dominic for about a year and a half. He's one of our athletes who come from a different country, traveling all the way from Johannesburg, South Africa. He is a team leader on and off the field, and one of our many students has found that success in the classroom. Dominic has received a 4.0 this past uh, semester. And uh, with that, I welcome Dominic Grobler to the stage. Talk about a tough act to follow from this previous student speaker. Thank you so much <laughs> for this. Um, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Dominic. I am from South Africa. I am eventually here to study sports psychology. And I was recruited here at Lakeland to play on the men's soccer team. And you know what they say, this is more or less a dream come true for me. But arriving and setting up here Setting up a new life was both daunting and exhilarating for me. My family and I were clear from the start that I will only be able to set up my life here, to set up my life in the US, if I managed to secure external funding through scholarships. And this is mainly due to the dollar exchange rate with the South African currency. It fluctuates as we speak, but just to put a little bit of this in context for you, the South African, I mean, the uh, US dollar versus South African rand is about $1 to 14.5 rand. My weekly grocery bill, all healthy stuff I assure you, is about $45 or 580 rand a week. My family is able to send me 7,000 rand a month, about $480. And you see, this is where people like you step in. You have reasons for why you make your donations. Why you make your donations available to colleges like Lakeland. And oftentimes, I don't think you quite understand who receives it or what they do with it. So let this young South African boy standing in front of you assure you that if it wasn't for your generosity, young people like me would not be able to do what I am doing right now. Would not be able to stand in front of you halfway across the world, having left everyone and everything I know behind to embark on a new life, to embark on a new journey here. I work hard to maintain my 4.0 GPA. I signed up for a college job where I work here, earning $10 an hour as an international student, and I mean, this helps fill the gaps. But funding from donors like you enable me to pay my college tuition. Believe me, I enter every single semester with trepidation, praying that my fees will be covered through my applications for scholarships and for the college fund allocation. I have a great aunt in South Africa, and you know she tells me that every single day she prays for me. And not only for me, but she prays for all the people who are good to me. And this morning, I want to let you know that that is you people as well. That is the friends that I've made here. That is the people who work behind the scenes tirelessly. Mike at the AFC, the Women's Center, the Honors Program, the Men's Center. That is every single person here who has given me this opportunity. In South Africa, we have a saying, Ubuntu. And the saying means, I am because you are. It encompasses the concept that we need to look out for each other. 
and that we all exist together to take responsibility for our fellow person. So I want to thank each and every one of you for being a living example of what Ubuntu means. Now, I want to finish today with a story about one particular man sitting in this audience tonight. Or this morning, sorry, it's dark in here. Um, <laughs> it was probably the fall of last year, and we were training in the morning, about seven of us on the men's soccer team. This car drives past. And we're playing, I don't know what you call it here, keep away, piggy in the middle, rondo, and we see this man walk up to us. Dress shoes, suit pants, button-down shirt. Walks through the gate towards the soccer field. So I walk up to him and he goes, I, I greet him first, I go, morning, sir. He goes, do you know who I am? <laughs> I said, yes, sir, you're the president. The president of the school, I mean. <laughs> and that is when Dr. Beveridge came and for a good 40 or so minutes joined in our men's soccer practice. In his dress shoes, which he ruined, <laughs> his tight-fitting suit pants, which he almost split, <laughs> and his white shirts that surely needed the dry cleaners after that. I want to thank you all for allowing me the opportunity to be here and for your generosity. Thank you. Lakeland is very glad you decided to come here, Dominic. And if soccer doesn't work out public speaking, it may be uh, something for you to consider. That was a fantastic talk. Thank you so much. Thank you so very much. All right, our third um, batch or group of speakers. Um, we'll start with Jennifer Collis. Jennifer. As Greg mentioned, I'm Jennifer Collis. I'm one of the associate provosts and directors of the Honors Program. I'll speak briefly about the Honors Program and then also introduce one of our Honors students, Janice Robinson. The Honors Program was established in 2018. With an inaugural class of 20, we now have 100 students enrolled with an average GPA of a 3.7. Although it's an exceptional group of scholars, it's also an incredibly diverse group of students with 36% underrepresented populations and Pell eligibility at the same rate or higher as the college average. This is a group of students with many of the same concerns and challenges as other Lakeland students, but they find support and community in a program that develops and highlights their academic strengths. Through the generosity of the Lakeland Foundation, this group of outstanding students are given the opportunity to shine. Along with other honor societies and student engagement programming, honor students participate in honors coursework, service, leadership development, and community building. They are also connected to four-year college transfer partnerships. Our students are actively involved across campus and participate in travel, research, and other academic endeavors regionally and even internationally. Our three pillars of community, leadership, and academic opportunity are best represented by students like Janice Robinson our next presenter. Janice, an international student, has taken full advantage of all that Lakeland has to offer. She is an outstanding student, campus leader, and community member. As Greg mentioned, everyone knows Janice. <laughs> On any given day, you may find Janice participating in athletics or other activities, leading a campus tour, or serving our local community. But one of her greatest strengths is being a compassionate and selfless leader and friend, always bringing others along on her incredible and inspirational journey. Her own story 
best represents the honors experience and opportunities made available through the generosity of our donors and campus friends. Janice? Wow. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Collis. <laughs> it is a great honor to stand before you today. As a member of the Lagan Foundation, the president, donors, board of trustees, faculty, teachers, students, and guests, I cannot express how honored I am to be standing here with you. In such a short period of time ago, it seemed just the blink of an eye. I was sitting where you all were sitting. As an international student coming to this great country, I have been very fortunate recipient of so many scholarships over the years. I could not believe that someone who didn't even know me would make an opportunity for me to further my education. As I sat and watched speakers, students pour out their heart and souls and told everyone how grateful they were for the things that the Lakeland has done for them. The way Lakeland has changed their lives by paving the road for their future. These were students of different backgrounds that never forget their gratitude and how sincere they were to, to have the opportunity to speak with you. I felt that same honor and impact that I want to share with you all. And how Lakeland has provided me the greatest of opportunity in life. Sorry, I'm not the best ever speaker here. The opportunity and the chance to get an education is a chance for me to better myself and do something that no one else in my family has ever done, which is to earn a college degree. Let me tell you a little bit about myself. Can I have a tissue for my issue? <laughs> So I was born in Jamaica, a tiny country. Thank you. Sorry. I was born in Jamaica, a tiny country compared to the USA. My country had very small opportunities. My family had very little. And when I said very little, Many of you would appreciate how little that little is. Jamaica education system is very different. There is no free public tuition. I could not afford to attend college. I never expected to attend an American school of higher learning. I wouldn't even entertain the thought for one second because we could barely could find food. <laughs> Just being able to get a job, that's the goal. That's the dream. Any job even with a minimum wage in Jamaica is equivalent to one dollar and ninety-eight cents an hour. You can think how it goes for the, for the cost of living. I have five brothers, five sisters. My mom has four of us and my dad ate. I grew up with my mom's side of family. 
I am the only one for my mom and dad. I am, I am the oldest of my mom, four kids. My, sibling and I, my siblings and I live lovingly, even though there was not much in the household. Financially, my mom struggled, but we were grateful for the little she has. I've been through a lot of painful situations while growing up. A lot of painful and traumatic experience. But the worst was yet to come. My mom passed away from cancer. And at the age of 20, I was left to care for my younger siblings. I was working at Margaritaville at the time and did my best to help my younger brother and sister to finish school. The pay was not much, and 65% of it goes back into taxi fare. I had trouble keeping up and ended up begging many times. My aunt tried to help, but three years later, she also died of cancer. I was desperately in need for help. And as I dealt with my grief, help came my way. As I met an American family and shared my tragic story, they saw a young woman with tremendous potential who wanted to grow and help others along the way. They introduced me to Lakeland and said it would be great for me. And man, they were right. Working at Margaritaville, I decided upon a business degree because I see how Jimmy Buffett used his wealth to help others. And I also wanted to use my business degree to start my own business so that I could help others as well as my family. I was introduced to my first job on campus by Dale Resnick, one of my past teachers, to be a new student orientation leader. I then went to the Women's Center and hear stories, many students who faces issues just like mine. And that's when I started leaping out. I met my first student friend at the orientation and was very happy at the orientation leader uh, in, in summer 2019 to do the new student orientation. So far, I have worked over six jobs on campus since then. These jobs were help. These jobs helped me as the foundation helped me to be able to send money back home to my country during the time of COVID when I know my brothers and sisters are suffering from hunger. As you all know, or may know, I got involved in many programs on campus student government, campus activities board, the women's center, men's center, Lakeland Honors Program, student engagement, Sigma Kappa Delta English Honors Society, Phi Beta Kappa Psychology Honors Society, and Phi Beta Kappa Honors Society. I played soccer and volleyball on our Lakeland volleyball team and help clubs and students in the best situations I can. I created history here by being a Northern District representative for the Phi Data Kappa Ohio region and win for the first time most distinguished Northern District representative at a state level. And this weekend, while in Colorado, I won 
distinguished regional officer at a national level. And among that are a chapter one most distinguished chapter awards. I am also proud to be the first person from Lakeland to run for international office for the largest honors society in the world. I get to stand and present to over 4,000 presidents, students, faculty, and guests. It was the biggest stage I ever stand on. And probably that's why I'm still shaking. <laughs> I did not win, but I did touch lives. And I know this because of my growing followers and the motivation that came back after I finished my speech. So I made it to the Salmon finalists. As I said, I didn't win, but my American brother won. We were in the Ohio region together. We grow together. And I've learned from Lakeland, you don't have to be in a position to be a leader. So even though I didn't win, I, I still touched lives. And I did all these things that I've done, all my involvement, and I still managed to graduate with summa cum laude. While doing my studies, I was still grieving. Grieving, but active. I used my weakness to build my strength. And over the years in college, I had some more family losses, including this semester. I rushed home multiple times. And how I make it through is because of all my Lakeland family, all over campus. The list is long. I draw strength from the love and care, empathy and understanding, flowers, snacks, and bananas, a small gift of words, of motivations, to brighten my day and give me the courage to go on. You have no idea how this meant to me. I would like to thank everyone, everyone who touched my life and helped me grow to the high potential. I want to thank every department on campus. Thank you to my teachers, the Women's Center, the Men's Center, the Athletic Department and coaches, the police department, the learning center, all honors programs and advisors, coordinators, my areas of work, the student engagement office, students, the new orientation coordinators, the video production crew, the Veteran Center, the janitors, the deans, the provosts, hives, all resources on campus that help students like me. The international coordinators, the president, the board of trustees, 
the Lakeland Foundation and donors, you did change a life. And as you changed one life, that life changed another. And this is how we will change the world. Thank you, my family. Janice, that was amazing. Thank you for being so open and sharing your story with us today. Um, let the record show you are a leader and you're a leader I'd be honored to follow. Thank you for all you've done. Um, so could I ask for one more round of applause for our wonderful students and staff here today? Thank you all for sharing your stories. It's an honor to have you as part of the Lakeland family and for you to be so open with us. It's not easy to do this, I know, um, but I couldn't be more grateful for this morning. So thank you for all that you've done. Um, and thank you to our donors. I mean, I hope that you walk off campus today knowing that you made or you were part of these stories being made possible. And um, these are three stories. But there are many, many more stories that are, that are very similar um, in theme in that the support we receive to the foundation that in turn comes to support our students is so deeply appreciated by them. So um, thank you for coming today. Thank you for uh, enjoying a cup of coffee and a donut with us and, and listening and supporting our students and our staff. Um, I also want to give a, a quick shout out to Lori Principe. She, um, put this event on today, um, as well as the staff who supported her in making this event possible. So thank you, Lori, for all you did to make this morning um, a success. Well, that'll conclude the program today. Please feel free to grab another donut or 12. Um, <laughs> make sure you take a good look at Mike Bircher's shoes. They're just absolutely phenomenal. I've been, uh, uh, I didn't, I'm sure that was part of the standing ovation that you gave at the end. Um, but thanks again for coming today. There's a wonderful art exhibit that you are more than welcome to enjoy for free. Um, and again, thanks for doing what you do for our students. Appreciate it.